hello everyone and welcome back this will be the last video of the ebg analysis series and today we are going to learn about base axis and base deficit as always let's begin with the physiological basis the two main systems involved in acid base regulations are respiratory and renal systems the respiratory system controls co2 a volatile acid and the renal system regulates bicarb and other non-volatile acids and bases. The two components are linked by the bicarbonate buffer system that occurs particularly in RBCs and is given by this reaction. This reaction is reversible meaning that it can kick start from either the CO2 site which is a respiratory component or from the bicarb site the metabolic component. However, when dealing with base excess or deficit, we are concerned about the metabolic site because it directly affects the concentration of bicarbonate or base. Now what does this mean? Let's look at the respiratory site to see why it is ignored first. As we can see, the reaction can start from the respiratory site affecting bicarbonate level. For example, when PaCO2 increases, CO2 reacts with water to form carbonic acid which then dissociates into hydrogen and bicarbonate. The pH can become low due to hydrogen ion accumulation but the concurrent bicarbonate rise ensures that the pH is normalized because bicarbonate prefers hydrogen. Here the rise in bicarbonate is CO2 driven or passive and is not metabolic alkalosis. When PaCO2 decreases, the reaction shifts left to produce more CO2 from hydrogen and bicarbonate. The bicarbonate then falls but again this is a CO2 related lowering of bicarbonate and not metabolic acidosis. So in both the cases, the change in bicarbonate is the after effect of change in CO2. Now, let's see what happens when the reaction starts from the metabolic site. The metabolic site contains hydrogen and bicarb. When there is excess hydrogen as seen in metabolic acidosis, the reaction shifts left. Hydrogen reacts with bicarb to form carbonic acid which then dissociates into water and CO2. The CO2 is then excreted via lungs indirectly removing hydrogen ions. Now in this case, bicarbonate is lowered due to non-respiratory cause. And the lowering of bicarbonate does not always have to be due to excess hydrogen, but it can also occur due to excessive renal excretion of bicarbonate. When hydrogen is lost as in metabolic alkalosis, the reaction shifts right to replace the lost hydrogen ions. This shift releases more hydrogen into the blood to help restore normal pH. But because the equation always releases hydrogen together with bicarb, it also increases bicarbonate level, which is why bicarbonate level rises in metabolic alkalosis. And as a simple logic as it is, adding alkali adds to the concentration of bicarbonate and the system again shifts to the right to generate hydrogen to neutralize it. So in both metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, the cause can be pinpointed to the metabolic component of the reaction. It was never a respiratory or PaCO2 that caused the change in bicarbonate. And this change in bicarbonate concentration independent of the influence of respiratory component is expressed by base excess or base deficit. The focus now is entirely on the metabolic component. Now, how do we isolate the true metabolic disturbance because at any given point, the bicarbonate value we get is the result of the combined effect of both the components. Well, we do this by artificially setting pCO2 to 40 mmHg or normal, making the respiratory component constant. For this, we use this equation. I don't even know the proper pronunciation for it. 
Anyways, this equation compares the patient's bicarbonate level to the normal value where a positive value suggests metabolic alkalosis and negative suggests metabolic acidosis. The last part of the equation adjusts for the non-bicarbonate buffer effect from buffers like proteins, phosphates and hemoglobin. 0.9287 in the start of the equation is just an empirical correction factor derived from the experimental data to improve accuracy. And prior to this formula, experiments were used to measure the amount of acid or base added to normalize the pH to 7.4. If the acid was added, it was called base excess and if base had to be added, then it was called base deficit. This is the reason why the base excess or deficit is defined as the amount of strong acid or base needed to titrate a blood sample to a pH of 7.4 under standard conditions of 37 degrees Celsius temperature and PaCO2 of 40 mmHg. From the clinical standpoint, the normal base axis is expected to be within negative 2 to positive 2 MeQ per liter. Base axis more than positive 2 MeQ per liter indicates metabolic alkalosis, which means that there is an excess of base or loss of acid. Base excess lower than negative 2 millimole per liter or MEQ per liter indicates metabolic acidosis or excess of acid or loss of base. Negative base excess is also called base deficit. In both the situations, the more the value deviates from the normal value, the more is the severity of the condition in question. In conditions like trauma, sepsis and shock, Base excess can indicate tissue hypoxia earlier than lactate level. When oxygen delivery fails, tissues shift to anaerobic metabolism, producing lactic acid and causing metabolic acidosis. Lactate levels may take time to rise and depend on the liver and kidney clearance, so they can be normal early in shock. In contrast, base excess calculated from pH, pH, CO2 and bicarbonate reflects the total acid load immediately. This is reflected as a negative base axis or base deficit. In clinical practice, the base axis level that suggests shock or tissue hypoxia is typically less than negative 5 millimole per liter. Further, the severity can be categorized as base axis between 6 to 9 millimole per liter suggesting moderate shock and base excess less than negative 10 millimole per liter indicating severe shock and often linked to high lactate and organ dysfunction. Some clinicians give sodium bicarb if the pH is below 7.1 and base excess is less than negative 6 millimole per liter. This is common in renal failure where the kidneys can't make enough bicarb. It can also be used in poisoning like TCA overdose to make the blood more alkaline and reduce toxicity. Bicarbonate, however, is not used in all the metabolic acidosis. But in some cases with large base deficit, it may help. The decision depends on patient's condition and risk. Finally, base access can help monitor treatment. A base access trend towards zero shows that the metabolic problem is getting better. If base access improves over time, it means resuscitation or treatment is working. This is useful in shock, sepsis or after giving fluids and drugs. On the contrary, table or worsening base access may suggest ongoing acidosis or poor response. That's all and with this, I end my video series on ABG analysis. If you have any queries on ABG analysis, feel free to ask me in the comment. I'll read on it and make sure to answer it to my fullest capacity. Thanks.